Alright, hi everyone. It's been a while since I made a video. So, uh, I'm going to be giving some updates on things uh, that you can do with Desmos that um, I found and ways I've found to make things easier. So, a while back we did an art project and um, that was pretty cool. Uh, since then, I figured out how to make points bounce and things like that. And I want to sort of walk you through this. Uh, part of what it is is once you know how to do this, this is actually done uh, with three parabolas but built into one piecewise function. And so it's a good reason for a student to learn piecewise. It's a good way to reinforce piecewise and sort of really um, make sure they, under uh, they understand domains. Because you need to set the domain for where it bounces each time on the x-axis. Not too difficult. Um, but once you do that, the whole point of this is once you do that, then um, you can change that animation and then you can make it a bouncing frog. So it started with a point following several parabolas and then I just changed that point to be a frog by downloading the image of a frog. Um, once you do a frog, you know, list in Desmos, you can do um, a whole bunch of frogs with one more line of code to do 10 uh, frogs by going 1 to 10, or 1 to 50 if you wanted 50 frogs, uh, or push the limit, see where uh, Desmos gets stuck, you know, 200 frogs, 300, I don't know. Um, but that's pretty much, this is exactly the same thing as this one. All I did is just added one more line of code. So it wasn't that much more brain power or that much more work or that much typing once you know how to do it. And so that's kind of what's fun to play around with and uh, learn here. Okay, uh, what, one other thing uh, along the same lines, jumping frog, or if you uh, prefer more um, more hip uh, teenage references, try video games uh, like Mario for teenagers who were teenagers back in the 80s and stuff like that. You know what I mean. Anyways, the point is you can, this is the same exact animation you can make whatever you, whatever uh, seems interesting to you. So. Let's uh, not delay, let's get into what you can do with that. How do you do all that stuff? So, uh, first, let's go ahead and open the new web window in Desmos. And what we're going to do is, what I found um, is the best way to do this is to label functions. Uh, so, since we usually use f of x for our main function, um, let's just do that to start with. So, let's say we're going to go f of x equals, we'll just do x. All right, let's move this over here, uh, make it a little darker. In projector mode. By the way, I really like projector mode when I'm projecting, and sometimes I like to take the grid off just so it looks a little more clean. Okay, f of x, and then g of x, and this is good reinforcement for why students should learn, um, you know, f of x, g, uh, f of x notation. Uh, instead of just labeling everything as y, you can't do that if you're going to do more advanced stuff in Desmos. You need more labels. F, G, H, and all so on. We're going to keep them basic. So I'm keeping all the slopes the same, and all this stuff would be good review for your students. Um, for those of you who are teachers, if you're just messing around with this for fun, well then, thanks for watching. <laughs> and so here we go. Here's our basics. We've got four equations, just, you know, different uh, y-intercepts. Okay. So what we're going to do now is turn this into piecewise. So we could chop the, the uh, domains on each of them. And if you want to chop the domain on here for like the f of x, you want to go from negative 10 up to ne negative 5, let's say. So negative 10 less than x less than negative 5. Okay, and so now it shows it only from all the way up and then at negative 5. There it goes, it ends. And so let's do the same with the next one. So um, what it is is that's how you would do that. But if we want to do all this into one piecewise function, piecewise is a little different. Okay. So if you want, if you're fine with separate equations, that's totally fine. But if you want uh, a point to move along uh, this, which is gonna, where it gets kind of fun, um, then we can, um, you know, have some fun with it and change things around a little bit. You'll see what I mean. Uh, if we if we want to follow a continuous path, we sort of need it to be one continuous function, so one piecewise function. Okay. So this is gonna be our piecewise function. We'll call it p of x. Now what's different about this is they, the notation-wise, they put the domain first, so I'll just copy and paste it this time. This is going to be our piecewise function. That's my domain, and then colon, and my function x. All right. That's the first part of my piece, that first piece of my piecewise. Okay, so that's from negative 10 to negative 5. Let's go now from negative 5. Less than x is less than 0. So from negative 5 to 0, let's have it follow the function colon uh, g of x. That was our next function. Oops. So, so again, let's, let's bring this up a little bit and explain stuff here. Because that's the point. Trying to learn how to use this thing. 
right here, this is your domain, and saying for this domain, follow this function. Why did I call it x? I meant to say f of x. Sorry about that. Glad I found that. Okay. For this domain, follow the first function. For this domain, follow the g function, comma, and then let's go continue it from zero with way up to negative five to zero. So let's go from zero to five, and we'll follow um, the, the, the colon space uh, g of x, h of x is next, and then comma space. So we ended at negative, uh, we ended at 5, let's go from 5 to 10. All right. And it's, it's a lot of stuff, but once your students get used to this, they'll, they'll be pros at it. They'll be typing like no, nothing. So what we want to do is instead of typing the function, we just type j of x. They'll get much faster at this. They'll get used to function notation, and it becomes a lot easier. So now you got all these other functions. Let's, what we're going to do here is we're going to go ahead and turn them off so they no longer show up. Okay. And now you just got that, and that's kind of nice, okay? And there's other features I'll show you later on in the video, maybe. Um, but so far, now we got that. Now you're like, well, what's the point of that? Well, the point of that was so that you could go um, like this. Let's say we want a point, a comma, p of a. And what this is going to do when you add a slider, it will follow, a will move along there. And there it goes, up and down along your points. All right, forward and backwards. Okay, so kind of cool. And there, there's, there's, uh, like I said, that's the beginnings of it. And you could add um, once you got the movement you want, we could change this to a smiley face. We could download the image of a smiley face and add that to it. It's very, very easy, uh, and we'll do that in just a moment. But for now, you start with these pieces, uh, and then each, each once you master one thing, you just keep on layering it. Now this looks cool, but I thought to myself, well, wouldn't it be cool if the other this function right here. Uh, went the other direction. All right, so that's where it's it's helpful to remember which one it was. I'm pretty sure. Yep, that was the blue one here. You can click on the color to remind yourself which one it is. That's why I keep these over here. So if I want the other direction, we know we need to change slope. They change the slope. Oh shoot! But now you got to change the y-intercept. You want to move the y-intercept down. So we're gonna have to tweak this equation. Okay. But all these are excellent conversations you have with the students. And then once you turn the blue line off, bam! Now we got that. Sort of action going on. Okay, that was looking cool. Let's change this last function. That was the J function. And if you're not sure, you click on the color here, and then, oh yeah, that is the purple one. So now I don't change this master this master equation here. I just go back and change the originals here. Change that to a negative slope, and shoot. Now we're gonna have to shift it up. So instead of minus 15, let's go plus 15. Nope, that's way too high. Plus five. Nope, not high enough. Oh, right there. Just negative x. That'd be perfect. And again, you could talk to the students about how you know that would have that y-intercept. Now we got sort of moving along a sort of mountaintop. We have a, an ant moving along a mountaintop. There's so much you can do with this. Whatever it looks like to you, you can make it move. All right. And then there, there's no no end to this. So like if we take off the that, now you can just have a random floating point. But it's kind of cool to have a mountaintop. Okay. And then if you're going to have a mountaintop, let's have a sort of... Uh, you know, we can put a flat line under here. This can become an art project. And then once you move the x-axis off of here, now it's just its own free, open, floating sort of a point on a, or ant, ant on the mountaintop. Now, ants don't tend to travel by themselves, so if you want, here's what we're going to do. What we're going to say here is, okay, we want it to go from A, which is cycling through all these numbers, you know, from negative 10 to positive 10, what if we want another one right past A? So what we're going to do is put B equals, okay, so actually let's put it up here first. Put A plus B. What's B? Let's put it up here too. What the, What is this? Well, now, and this is, again, this is a little bit more advanced for your more advanced students, but B is a list. We're going to have it go at one, two, three, and now we have, take a look, we have three of them. We have the original point A and then A at plus one, plus two, and plus three, so... Desmos gets really cool here. You can go dot 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 and put ten, and now you got ten ants all going along, or it looks like a centipede, or whatever whatever it looks like uh, creatively to you and stuff like that. Uh, you can create Pac-Man uh, mazes and stuff like that. There's really no limit uh, if you have the time. You can make all kinds of stuff. With this. Okay, so that's a lot of stuff already. I want to show you one last thing. Um, so that's how you do a list, and if you want to take that list off, take those out. 
goes out. This are a whole lot of fun, but that's a whole other thing you can, you know, go on your own on Desmond. Let me show you one last thing here. How would we make Mario or someone else follow this pattern? You go up here to plus, you go to image, and find the image I happen to use face. Okay, so the face is floating there. What we don't want to do is take a look here, and here's the clever part. That center, right now the face starts at zero, zero. We want it to follow this point. So we're going to copy and paste that center thing, the A comma P of A. And now your face should be following that. Right. And there you go. Now you've got your face following this point. Now, now, now it doesn't make sense to have this line here. So let's take that off. Take off his red nose. And now you just got a free-floating face. And again, you're only limited by what equations you know. So if you know the equations of circles, you can start getting them to follow the path of a circle. Uh, if you know the equations for parabolas, you can go you're going up and down on a parabola. Uh, anything. You can stack up a whole bunch of parabolas. It looks like you're bouncing like we did with the jumping frog, where we originally started this. So now we come all the way back from our jumping frog, which was this guy, using parabolas, to this guy. The only difference between those is uh, we use straight line equations for this guy. That's the only difference for this. Right. Uh, if you're still interested, we got a few more minutes. Let me just go ahead and clean up some stuff here. We don't even need this domain over here anymore. I'm going to take that off. I'm going to show you one other cool function or one other cool feature. Once you get a lot of stuff here, it's like, whoa, what the heck? So we're going to do this. We're going to add a folder and drag it up. A folder for our, um, our equation. Let's say equation, these are the pieces. Uh -huh. And we're going to do is drag all of these so you have that line right there. And then you can do this. Is this necessary? Well, if you start layering more than three or four equations, I find that it gets kind of overwhelming to look at wait, what, which one's what. And then you go like that, you can collapse this list now. And it hides all those. You still have them there so you can reference them. Um, but they're, they're hidden. Okay, so that's nice. Uh, if we add a folder again, Let's do equations, just equations. This is our piecewise one. This way it just keeps it separate wise. It's our separate one. I'm going to put our, just our piecewise equation. And then all this stuff. So you can, you can hide stuff in, in um, inside folders. And stuff like that. The last thing I want to show you about is notes. It's good to put notes to yourself because let's say you go on uh, summer vacation and come back to yourself. I don't remember doing any of this work. I don't know what I did here. Um, let's go, let's go here, uh, you can click add note, or if you hit the quotes, it'll automatically know you're doing a note. Um, our location A comma B of A is for a general point A, although the function P. P function. Okay. And again, all this stuff is great for, if you're teaching, it's great for reinforcing why we need X for notation. We could not animate this whole thing just being X's and Y's. It, it's just too advanced. We need more variables. And that's, that really is the, the real take home here. And the other thing to me that's just cool is we're doing some really awesome animation that just, just was not possible on the old TI-82 calculators. And those were great at the time too. Uh, but this is a little bit, a little bit better. So. Thank you very much for watching. Um, I hope to upload some more uh, gems like this as we go through this semester and um, help you find more stuff to do with Desmos. This is just the tip of the iceberg. There's literally so much to do and so much more that I don't even know how to do. Um, so check out Desmos. Get searching on there. Uh, thanks for watching and have fun with it. All right, there we go. There's your, your space there. Oh, one final, final thing. You notice how we crop, crop this. Um, you can't even tell what's done in Desmos. So if you use the screen capture tool, uh, the Chrome capture tool, which isn't working on my uh, my Mac here, uh, you can capture this and turn it into a GIF file. So if you had a bouncing head of your favorite uh, celebrity, um, Halloween time bouncing pumpkins, uh, Valentine's bouncing hearts, anything like that, there's there's really no end to it. You can create your own GIFs um, by using Desmos. So that's pretty cool at least to an old guy like me. So thanks for watching. Have a great day. Uh, have fun with it all.